All right, so this is my new custom mechanical keyboard. I name it Fendrana, and it is a wired wireless split keyboard. So you can use it either wired, you can use it wireless. Uh, it'll work both ways, and it runs off ZMK. Before I get too far into it, PCBWay manufactured the PCBs for me for free, but this video isn't sponsored, and uh, I'll talk about that later in the video and in the description. But for now, compared to my last uh, wireless keyboard, this is a much improved version. Uh, it is slimmer by about 50%. Battery life lasts up to like three times longer, and uh, it's a bit more functional while being just a much smaller, lower profile. Uh, so if we want to go to a video demo, we can actually zoom out here to my desktop, and uh, you can see it just wakes back up. We can start typing out Fendrana, and it types out on the desktop, and if we actually move our tablet in frame here, you can see nothing's plugged in, and we can just switch over to my tablet and just type out Fendrana again, if I can actually type properly. Uh, but we can just switch back to desktop, delete that, switch back to tablet, delete that. You can see it quickly switches compared to my last keyboard, which took a couple seconds. Uh, this is a much more improved version. It has much faster responses, can uh, connect to multiple different PCs, and as mentioned, is thinner and uh, generally lasts longer with battery life. Uh, if you want to see the underneath of it, there's only three screws visible. They're the three holding the battery cover in place, and that's kind of temporary right now. I kind of want to improve that. You can see it's bulging a bit just because of the way I've done it. Uh, so the goal with this was to make it as thin as possible, and I think I've accomplished that goal with the profile of the keyboard. All right, so I figured I'd talk about the inspiration behind uh, Fendrana and why I'd built another one so quickly. Uh, so the main inspiration behind this board was uh, the faults in my last one, uh, the Sanctuary. Those main faults were uh, three main things, which was power management and efficiency, uh, the design of it, and then the functionality of it. Uh, while the last one did that okay, it didn't do it particularly well, and I think that's where Fendrana has really improved. Uh, so I'll show it here, just for reference. This is the Sanctuary. It still works, but there's a couple of faults with it. Uh, the, as said, the design, uh, there's a few 3D printing errors, but more of the seams in the middle don't particularly look great. Uh, so it kind of is a weird design. I still have debug headers popping out there. But uh, it's kind of a okay design. So this one, I wanted to reduce that, uh, make the split actually make sense, and have it uh, go down the middle where it actually splits. And then all the screws are hidden underneath the uh, key switches, obviously accepting, uh, except the battery on the back here. But uh, most of them are hidden and it looks a lot better from the top. And then uh, the design of it was, um, I wanted to go with a different design this time, which was more of an ice theme. Talk about that later with the battery management. Uh, so power on Fendrana was not very efficient. I used off-the-shelf components and basically I had to take the 3.7-ish 3, 3 volts from the battery, uh, jump it up to 5 volts, and then jump it back down to 3 volts for the ESP. But with this, uh, it basically just takes the 3.7 volts, regulates it to 3 volts, and that's it. The LEDs and microcontroller are powered from that. Uh, so again with that, the LEDs, I went with one color since one color is more efficient than having all the colors. And I really only use cyan anyway, so I figured I'd go with it. Uh, so since I was using cyan, I figured I'd uh, pick kind of a theme that fit cyan and I figured ice fit pretty well. So I chose these keycaps uh, really for the switches since I was going to lower profile. I only have a couple of uh, choices. With the, so these are Kyle chalk switches. They have about half the travel of normal mechanical keyboard switches, but they feel the exact same, at least to the, uh, compared to the other Kyle switches. Uh, so basically, I had two choices with the keycaps if I wanted a normal staggered keycap, keyboard, and that was black or white keycaps. Now I have plenty of black keycap boards, so I figured I'd go white, and I've been liking this translucent PLC, PETG. Uh, as the casing, so I figured I'd go with an icy theme. Uh, and then, obviously, with the ice theme, I went with the name Fendrana, since it uh, is the ice area in Metroid Prime, which fits in the naming scheme of the Sanctuary, which is a technology area in Metroid Prime 2. So those were the uh, kind of things for the design and the uh, functionality. Now, functionality-wise, um, the last keyboard worked well, 
Uh, it worked wireless and it could split between uh, different PCs, but the uh, switch took a bit of time. It took about five seconds to reboot or whatever. And uh, this one, uh, it also didn't allow you to plug it in. Uh, if you plugged it in, it would go to debug the ESP32. But with this one, you can actually plug it into a PC and it'll type. So you can actually use it to get into the BIOS of the PC. Uh, and then you can also like change boards much faster. You can change between your PC, your laptop, all within like half a second, which is much faster than my last one did. And uh, generally the firmware is just a bit more stable. Um, I'm not a great firmware guy, so I wrote the sanctuary myself and you can see that on my GitHub, but it's not particularly great. While ZMK is actually written by more professional software uh, developers who full-time job it is to actually fix this stuff. So that's kind of the uh, overview of it. Uh, obviously, there's a couple things weird with this. If you look at it, there's a lot of gaps between the keys. Uh, it's because it uses Cherry MX spacing. So this is actually a Cherry MX compatible board. Uh, obviously not both at the same time. But if you solder on the hot swap switches, you can do that. Uh, and then I'll show it a bit later in the teardown with the blank PCBs to show you. But uh, there's a bunch of other features that I'd like to add that uh, I couldn't add to the sanctuary. But I haven't added those as of yet. Uh, I'd rather get this video out and then perhaps in the future when I get those added, I'll make another video. So over here in my workstation area, I have Fendrana and I have the PCB that does the heavy lifting for Fendrana. Uh, before I get too far, I should mention this PCB was manufactured by PCBWay, and they actually paid for it to be manufactured for me. I have no contractual obligation. Uh, they didn't pay me anything else. They just sent this out for free, which was super kind of them, and I'll probably talk about them in the end of this section a bit. Uh, so I want to go over kind of the design philosophy of this. Uh, you can see I have all these lines here. These are mouse bytes, so you can actually section off what sections you want. So if you don't like the F row, you can remove it. If you don't like the navigation cluster, which is the insert home delete end, you can remove it. And you can remove this section, which is this little blank section on the uh, keyboard, which is for extra features like a display and a control stick. So that's gonna be like Glacier 1 here, which I haven't really shown much yet. But uh, that's basically the design philosophy of the front. You can see it is uh, Cherry and Cal Chalk compatible, at least Chalk V1. Uh, so you can see there's holes pretty much everywhere. And uh, you can see stabilizer cutouts for both Chalk and Cherry. Uh, you can see the bottom row is a different layout depending if you're using Chalk or Cherry. And I think I have a couple sections here if you want to uh, space the uh, arrow key a bit differently. So I can flip it over and show uh, basically the back side here. So you can see uh, this section here is where the microcontroller goes. So it's an M.2 form factor. It's a Maker Diary NRF52840, I believe. And uh, it basically does the heavy lifting of the Bluetooth stuff. So that's the uh, antenna since I can't design that yet. And it fits in a M.2 card form factor. Obviously you can't plug it into a PC, but uh, it basically just uses SparkFun's MicroMod form factor, I believe. And uh, basically you solder the M.2 connector here and you can just easily pop them in and out. You can see the battery charging and uh, regulating circuit here. So I basically take that battery, charge it to 4.2 volts, which is the max voltage a lithium battery will take and uh, regulate it out to three volts, uh, which is what will uh, power the microcontroller and the LEDs. You could actually power it lower if you don't have LEDs since the microcontroller can go as low as 1.8 volts, I believe. But uh, the LEDs need a bit more to actually uh, regulate down. Since they're blue, I believe they need about 3 volts, which is why I did 3 volts. And they, they have like something stupidly low, like a 10 ohm resistor. Um, but basically, there's the regulator. The regulator is also monitored. Uh, so the input, if it reaches below 3 volts, uh, it cuts off the voltage. So that's actually for the safety of the batteries too. These batteries have an internal cutoff of about 2.7 volts. However, I don't really like to get it that low since they're lithium and they're kind of scary. Uh, so I basically put that in place so it will disconnect anything after the uh, regulating circuit, which is everything else other than battery charger. And uh, basically this was manufactured by PCBWay. Uh, as I said before, they paid for the PCB, but they have not sponsored me. They have not paid me in any other way other than just sending this out. 
So this was the actual first PCB I've used of PCB Way. Uh, I've bought from JLC PCB before, but uh, with this board, they're actually very nice and uh, caught some errors I made. So uh, if you looked on the inside of these two, there's about like four fly wires in this one and about one in this one of traces I missed. However, uh, there would have been a lot more if they didn't catch some of the stuff. And uh, especially with the um, mouse bites here, uh, there was a couple errors I had where they weren't confident in the manufacturing. So they actually came back to me and said, hey, we noticed this in your design. Uh, do you want to fix it before we actually send it into manufacturing? So there was about uh, back and forth of like three or four times before I actually got a revision that was able to be uh, manufactured, which was actually pretty cool um, to have a PCB house fix that for me. I haven't had JLC PCB do that before, but uh, my PCBs haven't been as complicated as this one before. The closest one to it would be Glacier 1 that I had manufactured by JLC. However, even then, uh, you can see I have a couple fly wires here because I didn't manufacture it correctly and they didn't catch it either. Uh, that's not their fault, but uh, I will say PCB Way has been uh, fantastic to work with so far. Uh, I'm sure they probably don't like me since I've taken so long in this project, but I wanted to make sure I had a mostly complete project and uh, to me, this is pretty complete of a uh, actual keyboard. It's the most professional one I've made. And uh, I'll probably do a comparison shot in the next shot of between it and my last keyboard. All right, so I actually lied. Uh, I have all my keyboards that I've made uh, in this shot here. So I'll kind of go over them, the differences between them. We have my first one, which was uh, Clavier. Uh, horrible name, just keyboard in French, I believe. Uh, it's a just a wired keyboard based on the uh, Pro Micro, and uh, this was Sanctuary. This was what actually got PCB Way's attention, and uh, got a lot of attention online. Uses an ESB32 located about there, and uh, wirelessly communicates with the desktop. I wrote the firm firmware for it. Uh, it's pretty responsive, but there's a lot of errors with uh, switching devices and uh, all that that kind of make it undesirable. And uh, I have Fendrana here, which is by far the smallest and uh, the most feature rich. So I kind of want to go over uh, the differences between them because uh, it's kind of an evolution of progress. So you can see this first one looks really rough. Um, it looks rough because I wanted it to be rough. Uh, I planned on actually sanding it out and making it all smooth. But uh, I had some people mention they actually kind of like the hammer mark look because you can see I bent that over myself. And uh, it's actually kind of grown on me. Uh, funny thing is that LED diffuser is actually uh, hot glue with clear coat on it. And it survived all these years. Um, you can see the sanctuary is about the same size. It's actually a bit larger since I had an extra row for the arrow keys. And uh, it uses 18650s, which makes it so thick compared to the others. And uh, makes it actually the heaviest too, I believe. Uh, no, the aluminum one's heavier. Uh, <laughs> but basically, this one had a USB hub in it, and I originally intended for it to control the PC with the parallel port here. Um, so it was going to have USB 3, uh, start, reset, audio, all through that header, but I never actually finished that implementation. Uh, this one uh, was just uh, wireless, and I planned on having a USB hub in it as well. However, I never got around to that. And uh, then I have Fendrana, which I dis ditched the USB hub idea since I was mostly using it wirelessly. And uh, it brings back, basically combines these two of being a wired and wireless board together. Uh, so I'll show in uh, the next shot probably the thickness difference between them because it's kind of insane how much I've reduced it. So you can already kind of see from this angle how thin Fendrana is. But uh, if I pan it down more, you can actually see <laughs> just the difference between the two. Uh, so Fendrana is like almost half the height, uh, if not less than the Sanctuary. And uh, that's due to these low, low profile switches, the smaller batteries, and just the more efficient circuitry uh, that I was able to do. So Sanctuary used 18650s, which is why it's so thick. They basically are like rolled up like that. And uh, this uses LiPo flat packs or whatever. Uh, even with the anti-slip feet, it is much thinner than the Sanctuary. And the Sanctuary has no anti-slip feet. It'll slide around on the desk all day. 
Uh, you can actually see if I stack the two halves of uh, the sanctuary, it's it's actually less than half, including the encoder, which is pretty imp impressive personally. Uh, it's a huge, huge improvement from the first board I made in high school uh, to the one I'm at right now. Okay, so the cool thing about this board is you can actually just snap it right down the middle like that. And uh, that's basically how you get the two halves of the keyboard. And you just grab a set of pliers here. These are about way too big for it. But uh, you just take those little mouse bites off and then you're pretty much good to go. You have two keyboards instead of one. Don't try this at home. Kind of wanted to go into where I plan to take Fendrana and how I plan to improve it. Uh, so some of the main improvements I want to do right now is adding the features that I didn't get to add yet and uh, fixing some of the faults that I have, some of the small faults. So the features I want to add are the display and joystick. Uh, make sure those are implemented and working. Uh, the only reason I haven't done it is because joystick and ZMK isn't completely supported yet. And uh, I'm not sure if I want to go down the branch path yet. Uh, I want to fix some of the uh, files such as the battery cover here. I'm not quite happy with it uh, since it pokes out a little bit. And uh, the PCBs had a bit of issues where I had to do a couple of um, wire runs just to fix a couple things. So I think I've already fixed the PCBs, but uh, basically I want to make it so I could actually sell this if I wanted to. I have a couple spare PCBs here. Over the next couple days, I might be uh, live streaming building those up because um, I have the parts for them. I might as well and then kind of see where it goes from there. Maybe I'll start selling them if people are interested. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'll just keep them as spares. But uh, yeah, if you want to see more of this keyboard, uh, consider subscribing. Um, you can like it, comment, ask questions. Feel free to. I'll try to answer them. I try to read most of them. Um, if you haven't been on this channel before, um, you can check it out. I mostly just build stuff here and show what I've built off. Um, that's Lego or I have Lego here that I've built on stream. Um, basically just kind of whatever I want to do. So if you want to see a random guy on the internet build stuff, uh, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next video, live stream, short, whatever I feel like doing. I don't really have a plan.